Good morning, good afternoon and good evening wherever you are in the world and welcome to Inspiration Through Innovation Medical. Now for any of you that have attended our Inspiration Through Innovation events before, you know that what's coming up on the agenda is a series of world-class manufacturing best practice technology demonstrators. But it'd be wrong of us just to think that we'd done a great job, we'd produce these demonstrators and called it a day and put them on the shelf and think, job done. But we don't do that. That'd be wrong. It'd be wrong of us to do that. And technology moves on, technology improves. And we're, we're always looking for, for ways to optimise process. And what we're going to look at today is, is how we can further optimise an additive manufacturer titanium tibial tray. Now there is a session that follows this um, that will show you a world-class solution but you know we can still take it a step further and, and since we recorded that session we've had a great opportunity to take this process on further. So what I'd like to do is welcome Aaron Radford from CG Tech, um, one of our key collaborative partners and Aaron just introduce yourself please. Yeah, hi Dave, uh, thank you for having me back at Seco. It's always a pleasure to be here working with yourself. Uh, so I'm the sales engineer for the uh, Midlands, South East and Southern Ireland for CG Tech UK. Um, as Dave, as you said, you know, we've, we've started to look at this part already once. Uh, we felt it was important to involve it within the ITI event. Uh, the potential uh, saving for the customer was too big to go and notice. So we really thought we've got to, we've got to put this out to the customer we've got to show them what what's available and what we can do so um yeah i suppose really the best thing to do is for us to talk about the event and what we achieved but. yeah i think when we start looking at components like this it, it's very easy to get lost in just the the actual the sharp bit you know the cutting tool side and and maybe the cam strategy as well possibly the work holding and and the machine tool but there are always other opportunities and, and one thing I'm seeing more and more in this digital age is that software is providing a real sort of game changer in moving things forward in, in production, in optimising process, in you know, improving cycle time, but also that paradox of you know, when we look to improve cycle time we run things faster, it has a detrimental effect on the tool. But some of the technologies that we're seeing nowadays, um, in particular CG Tech Force, yeah. um, Bericut Force, is it, it takes that sort of issue away, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, as you said, Force is the optimization software uh, available through CG Tech and uh, part of the Bericut family. And anybody who's watched any of the ITI events before will know that we've used Force, but it's always been more on larger aerospace components yeah. so it's very easy to see a saving and if we jump back slightly uh, and how this came about and obviously CG Tech wanted to run an event uh, earlier on in the year talking about force uh, we wanted to work with yourselves to do this but we kind of wanted to go outside of our comfort zone yeah. and, and do something different to what we've always done and uh, I guess really we, we wanted to show there was more to force than just the aerospace industry and if you speak to anybody within CG Tech, they tell you that isn't the case anyway. You know, yeah. we put this into all different industry sectors, but when it comes to doing events or videos, etc., the aerospace industry has always been the one we focused on. So, having the discussion with yourself, you said you had the ITI medical event coming up. Yeah. It'd be a good idea. Maybe we could look at something within that. Uh, and obviously, you presented us with a tibial tray, which. To be honest, at first we kind of panicked because we went, oh, it's a small part. Okay, it's yeah, 3D printed titanium, isn't it? So yeah. it's still a good material for us to see some potential savings from. But when it was quite a, a short running time anyway, we thought, well, we're, we're up against it here. What, what can we achieve? I and mean, that, that's a key point, isn't it? You were saying traditionally we're looking at long cycle time, yeah, um, long time in cuts, large structure, and, and that's where the mindset's typically been on. But you know, this is short cycle time, not a massive amount of metal cutting. No. But the advantage comes from the volumes of these components. Exactly, and I, I think that was it. W once we ran it through force, and again, sort of jumping back to the aerospace side, when we looked at that, we were getting 20, 25%, which equates to sort of 30, 45, maybe to a uh, minutes, maybe to an hour. Yeah. When we looked at this, you know, we were sort of talking 10 minutes uh, to start with, with a 12 to 15% saving. So it wasn't 
enormous. But yeah. then when I sort of came back to you, Dave, and I said, you know, this is what we've got. Do you think there's more in it? And you said, on a minute, you know, we're talking sort of. Oh. 600, 700,000 of these a year. Per manufacturer. Not per manufacturer, yet, yeah. So maybe yeah. 2 million just in Ireland alone being manufactured per year. Exactly. So then when we, when we looked at the numbers on that saving, we were going, hold on a minute, this is half a million pound. And I guess really we're all in a, a weird position at the moment with what's going on in the world. So driving costs down is important for everybody. Yeah. And usually it is that thing that people go back and go, okay, can we change our cutting tool manufacturer which we know isn't cheapest isn't best it's, yeah. it's uh, you know you, you've got to utilize what you've got and apply the right process and be, uh, best practice you have to go back and retrial it as well you know you have to exactly. go back through that validation and, and recutting components yeah. it's quite a lengthy and a manual uh, labor intensive process really exactly that and, and i guess when you you look at all the different steps that could be involved as we we're saying tooling cooling you know process uh, you know the actual cam strategy as you just touched on, that's quite a labour-intensive process to, yeah. to revisit all that stuff. And you might not really achieve anything uh, at the end of the day. Uh, you might see a small saving, but that's somebody's time. And with force, uh, it's, it's very automated. So run through the Vericut session, we get instant feedback on that data so we can look where, we, uh, you know, where the chip thickness is low or where it's consistent. We can see where there's high points within the data as well. So um, if we've got any areas that are causing maybe poor surface finish or potential cutter breakage or damage, and it's it's pretty much a click of a button, yeah, or click of a couple of buttons, and we can rerun that and force takes out all that labour yeah. and it it automatically adjusts the feed rates, the chip thickness, the force is generated, and it will optimise that program to the best it can be. Yeah. So as we said. We we took that program, this original tibial tray, ran it through force, which probably the overall time of running it through, putting in the, the cutting data settings, yep. impressing play again, was probably less than half an hour. Yeah, you know. it didn't, didn't take long. No, did and then we had an optimised program at, at the end. Yeah, I mean, just to come back to, you were just talking about the peaks and troughs. Yeah. So the, the, the high spots and the low spots. So what you're saying about force is that that balances those out. So where the process could be running harder and faster, and, and probably is actually more beneficial for the tool to be running faster, it lifts those low points up. Yeah. And where it's too high, it, it brings those down. Exactly that. So I think it was mentioned when we did our live event, I think Scott mentioned it, but when you look at a normal uh, NC program or a cam session, you'll have a flat feed rate yeah. and your chip thickness is then varying. What force? is doing is flipping it upside down so we keep a constant chip thickness and vary the feed rate yeah. but in doing that we can also then limit them spikes so I guess really when we say force you kind of think we're forcing, forcing the tool it. or forcing the program but actually it's the complete opposite to that um, analyzing the force and, and equalizing or harmonizing that yeah and we can get more involved with it you know that's a very base level to what yeah. we're looking at chip thickness and force but we can start looking at deflection we can look at uh, machine torque machine power so we can really get involved with it uh, a higher level to anything that we've done here yeah. uh, but it, it's a really useful tool to sort of see one what what load the machine's pulling uh, but obviously the, the ultimate goal at the end is we want to optimize the program maximize and maintain that chip thickness yeah. and reduce the high load while we're machining just to come back to the um, the cost savings. Yes. I mean, it's not just a monetary saving, is it? it it's the cycle time saving. Um, it, it's the capacity time that you free up. You know, yeah. We, we're maybe talking 12% on a 10 minute cycle time. Yeah. Times that by 2 million in, yeah, in I, the I medical think industry. When we worked so, out, yeah. it, it was something like 300 days capacity yeah. created, which is, is crazy. You know, nearly a year's capacity. So. Uh, obviously, depending on on the component, the material, uh, the time it's running, the volume is is all going to influence yeah. that. But on average, we'd see a, around a fifteen to twenty five percent cost saving. That's pretty comfortable for us. It's yeah. what we've seen out in the field. Um, non ferrous materials are going to be a little bit lower because obviously the tool yeah. is already running at quite a high feed and speed, so it's a bit harder to push it. But again, with that. Going back to the ITI Aerospace event, we, we optimised the 
aluminium skin plate, which we found uh, achieved a 17% saving out of that. So yeah. it's not just hard materials, it's not just aerospace. No. You know, steels, non-ferrous materials, across all industries, there's a saving there to be had. There is. But I mean, just coming back to medical again, the materials are quite difficult. You know, yes. We're looking at 3D printed or additive manufactured titanium here. A large portion of uh, the sort of um, implants, the orthopedic implants and, and the knee joint in particular are made from cobalt chrome, which yeah. is a, a difficult material to cut. Now, I mean, if we're looking to optimize a program, how is that going to affect, if we go for a really difficult material, how is that going to affect our ability to optimize? Uh, well, that's what the software's there for. Yeah. You know, uh, when we use the material within force, it's not just plucked out of thin air. You know, there's a lot of data gathering uh, done in the background. So within the yeah. force material catalog, we use what's called a Kistler table to uh, capture the materials coefficient. So we have a very accurate database to, yeah. to that material and so when it comes to optimizing it I, I guess really the ultimate goal is that we're looking to reduce the cycle time and create yeah. a saving but the other side to that is as you just said it's a hard material hard material is cut yeah so we're actually trying to protect the cutter as well uh, so we can you know we'd work on uh, the manufacturer's recommended data yeah and You'd be surprised when you when you start looking at these programs through force that yeah it might be programmed say point one which is what you guys might recommend or you know depending on material and it might only run for that for maybe five percent of the program and the yeah. rest of it the chip thickness is moving Fairs, so yeah. we're trying to keep that consistent because we know that's the data that yourselves and the other yeah. tooling manufacturers have designed the tool around and that's the optimum level for it to run at so yeah. we want to make sure we're achieving that and we're keeping that throughout the program. So in return, you should see an improved tool life, yeah. better surface finish, uh, obviously hopefully no t tool breakages, um, and just a smoother cut in general, uh, which again, has a, a better result for the machine than the spindle. Yeah, so more so, sympathetic to the machine as well. Exactly, yeah. so again, you know, these parts are a bit smaller, we're not gonna see massive loads on the machines, yeah. uh, but again, because they're smaller parts, they're probably on high spindle machines, so they've got less torque. Yeah. So it's a good area to start saying, well, we can limit this. You know, we, yeah. we want to push the program, we want to get the best out of it, but we know that we can't push the spindle over X amount of thousand RPM or whatever. So we can start putting them limitations into the program yeah. as we're trying to optimize it. So yeah, it's really an all round of cycle time reduction, yeah. uh, cutting tool life, improvements uh, and surface finish improvements yeah. and obviously as you said kinder to the machine and, itself so. and, and on these volume parts you know people are running 24 7 yeah so those machines are doing a lot of work exactly and, and so if you can be kinder to the spindle probably i mean the knock-on effects of just you know we're not just looking at that cutting edge are we we're, no. you know we're, when we're talking optimized process we're optimizing the entire process you know yeah. so it, it's that sustainability aspect as well. You know, we're probably not pulling as much load on the machine. No. So yeah, I mean, it's just an all round win. Exactly that. And I, I think w when we looked at these parts, we, we didn't go crazy with them. You no. know, it was, we, we took the constants that we could see within uh, the data yeah. and we, we optimized to that. So we could potentially go further working with the likes of yourselves yeah. uh, to sort of see if we could push the tools a little bit further and, and obviously keep that higher uh, chip thickness that you, you recommend but also then there's the other side to it that we can look at the air cutting time yeah so we can reduce the amount of time the tool's not in cut right so i, I guess really the key thing is if, you, if you're not creating swarf you're not making money so yeah, sure. we're, we're trying to within force make sure that we're cutting metal at the most optimal rate and obviously we're reducing the time that the tool's spent yeah not in cut so it, it, yeah, there's a bit more to it than what we tend to just always look at, but I, th I think as a customer project, we could take this a lot further than what we've already got, which is a substantial saving anyway. Yeah. But I, I think we could definitely, you know, part of the partnership of what, how we work together, uh, this is something that we could Absolutely. take a lot further. And that's the key thing, and I think that's the point we're trying to make is that, 
you know, technology moves on, and it would have been wrong of us not to to jump on this opportunity to to prevent uh, to prevent to present this optimization. Yeah. Um, Aaron, if people want more information about Force, where should they go? So, go to the CG Tech website. Uh, there's a contact us page on there, uh, or if you know myself or any of the other sales guys, just email us directly, or speak to Dave and the other guys at Seco. They'll put you in touch with us. But if you've got a project that you think there's some potential in, or you just want to look at it have the conversation uh you know we can look at this for you we can tell you what we believe is achievable we can show you some case studies some results um and, and yeah and put some justifications together as well I, I think you know we we've worked together on this uh not just as an event but also customers and we, we know that the savings are achievable yeah, don't we dave and and i, I guess really it's Give, give us that opportunity and, and we'll happily come. It's give it a try, it. isn't it? You yeah. know, it, you can always be skeptical about these things. There's nothing to lose. Give it a try and, and see what happens. That's what we did. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for your time today, yeah, Aaron. Thank you, I uh, really appreciate that. And, and obviously for the collaborative support, uh, working with CG Tech, it's, it's always great. And, and yeah. to see these kind of optimizations and savings, it's, it's, what, it's what it's all about. Yeah.